So, as he was saying, I'm Imen Farli, I'm vice president of the association An Enfant Un Espoir. Uh, for American speakers, it's uh, One Child, One Hope, if we may say that. What am I going to say today is that I'm also an English teacher, and the subject I'm going to talk about is uh, education. How can, I, how can I not speak about education when I'm a teacher? But before we start about that, let me talk as a general, in a general, about education. You know, recently I've been conducting some uh, a recruitment campaign for the association. I've had a lot of pup uh, people coming to join the association, and when I asked to them a question, if you were a leader, if you were in a position to decide, what field would you tackle? What field would you change? What is your fight for society? Let me say that 90% of the interviewees answered education. I went ahead with a question. Okay, thank you, education, that's perfect. But what are you going to do, to do for education? Nobody could answer this question. It's good to try to change things, but you must have a plan, you must have an, ac an, uh, an action to do. You know, nowadays we can see through Facebook, for example, we see pictures of schools. They are poor schools, they are deteriorated. What are you going to do for these schools? Are you going just to share, to click and say, oh, poor school? That's not the way you are going to change things. Bill Conference today is doors to change. Education is the most important fight, let me say. Maybe I am subjective, maybe I am unbiased but that's very important. Education, it's the roots, it's a fight that starts from the beginning. When you, have, when you go to schools and you see pupils carrying heavy bags and they are like going to do something awful, that, as if the day it's torture day, it's not school day, they are not happy at school. What are you going to do for them? Click on Facebook, share, oh poor boy, look at his bag. 50 kilos, and he's still carrying going to school. Here, it's, it's our conscience, it's our motivation that should be present, that should be answering this question. You know, nowadays we see also a rise of private schools. State schools are abandoned. There is no infrastructure. There is no extracurricular activities for the pupils. I remember when I was in primary school, a long, long time ago, but not that long. When I, when I went to school, I was happy because every Tuesday I've had my reading club. Every Tuesday afternoon. Every Saturday I went there because I knew I was going to perform in Red Riding Hood or White or Snow White, and I was happy with that. Nowadays, pupils, they go and they don't have extracurricular <coughs> activities. No clubs. If you want a club, pay for it. In private schools, clubs, they are, you must pay for them. So if you don't have money, no club, no fun. So education, it's vain. No need for that. Even within the capital city, let's not talk about coastal areas and rural countryside. Let's forget about that. Even within the capital city, in Tunis, you see pe pupils in I, don't, I won't name areas, but some pupils are happy, they are having fun, they, they can go do some uh, sports activity, drama, music, uh, uh, etc. But those who are in the suburbs, those who are like uh, said our previous speakers, those who are in popular cities, what are they doing? They are doing nothing. And here comes the role of associations. You know that in Tunisia we have 3,000 associations. What are they doing? We are just sharing pictures, just going there, out there, here, all around the, the country, but there is no effective plan. Two years, uh, two years ago I joined, well not joined, but I attended a meeting in a, in a party, in a political party. When it, they were talking about everything, but when the time came for education, 
we were talking only about elite schools. How can you talk about elite schools when you have those who are in primary schools? They are suffering, and really they are suffering. So when it came, when the time came and I joined Anofan Espoir, my dream was only to save one child. I wanted to follow the educational career, let's say, of one child. Well, the problem is that I didn't succeed with, with one child. But what I gained after that, it was 130 child. Our association is sponsoring 130 child who are following them on the medical, uh, medical, uh, medically and uh, on their education. And I feel proud when I talk about 130 ch children because it's important to give them some hope and some, let's say, some, fa some fair uh, follow-up among these, among what's happening in our country today. What we need from associations and from people like you who are motivated and who come to conferences like this is to get engaged with them. We need your help. I won't say them, I want you with me, because I need volunteers like you with me. We have a lot of projects, like in any associations, but without the task force, the workforce, because we are a workforce, nothing could be done. It's not a question of, okay, it's good to design the project. Let's go to school X and do this. Let's build them a library. Really? Do it? And then? You need to follow. You need to do something with your heart. Because education is something that comes from the heart. And be sure that when you take care of children at lower age and you follow them step by step, they are the future. They will be the good and the best citizens in the coming, for the coming generations. I want to conclude by saying something. When you have ideas, don't keep them here in your heads because nobody would know what you have in your heads. What you must do is move on, put a step forward, yes, and join us. I won't say the other association, but join us and help, help us make modern schools and offer an equal chance for all pupils and specifically for those who don't have anybody to look at them and to help them raise. And that's it. Thank you very much.